The objectives of this presentation are to understand the reason for performing an antenatal examination and to be knowledgeable and competent in the procedure of antenatal examination. People fail this station commonly because they haven't had enough practice in antenatal clinic, they have poor technique, they lack in fluency and carry out the parts of the examination in an incorrect order, or they are rough with the patients and do not afford them the dignity which they deserve. Antenatal examination is routinely carried out by midwives, general practitioners and obstetricians for reasons of surveillance in pregnancy. This includes assessment of foetal growth and foetal well-being. Introduction to the station. Wash your hands with the alcohol gel that will be present in each station. Introduce yourself to the patient using your full name. Confirm the patient's name and explain what it is that you would like to do. Ensure that they are comfortable and maintain their privacy. For this station you will need alcohol gel, a tape measure and a pinard or sonicade. If you're using a sonicade you will need ultrasound aqua gel and tissues. Positioning of antenatal patients is important because of the pressure of the gravid uterus on the inferior vena cava which can cause syncope in the pregnant patient. Therefore the patient should be semi-recumbent, if this is not possible they should be placed in the left lateral so that the weight of the gravid uterus does not compress the inferior vena cava. You need to expose the patient from the symphysis to the ziphi sternum otherwise you will miss things. To start with a general inspection including the general condition of the patient whether they are comfortable at rest. This should be followed by an inspection of the hands and face to include the pulse, Hyperdynamic circulation is one of the physiological changes of pregnancy. Any signs of anemia, which is common and physiological in third trimester, this may be shown by conjunctival pallor, and other signs and symptoms of pregnancy, such as cloasma. To then move on to the abdomen, the patient is likely to be for examination purposes in the third trimester of pregnancy therefore there will be distension of the abdomen with a pelvic mass consistent with the third trimester of pregnancy. There may also be scars either from previous caesarean section, previous appendectomy, previous laparoscopy or other surgical procedures. In many patients you will see striae gravidarum, these are known colloquially as stretch marks, these are due to the rapid increase in size of the uterus and distension of the abdomen. Patients may have a linea nigra, which is a dark pigmented line extending from the umbilicus to the symphysis caused by rising levels of progesterone in late pregnancy. In some patients you may also see fetal movements. Remember to comment on anything that you do see in the patient's abdomen and to comment on significant negative findings. Palpation is usually started by measuring the symphysiofundal height in centimetres. This should be measured from the superior border of the pubic symphysis to the highest part of the fundus. Ideally this should be done with a blinded tape measure, repeated three times and an average taken. Palpation also includes a description of the lie and presentation of the foetus. Lie describes where the poles of the foetus are. In the vast majority of singleton pregnancies at term, this would be longitudinal. However, the lie may be oblique or transverse, as illustrated here. Presentation describes which part of the foetus would be delivering first. With a longitudinal lie, around 97% of foetuses will be in the cephalic presentation, i.e. the head will enter the mother's pelvis first and the baby's buttocks and feet are towards the fundus. In the other 3% the foetus presents by the breech. There are three different types of breech presentations. Footling where the feet present first. A frank or extended breech where the hips are flexed and the knees extended so the feet of the foetus extend towards its head. And flex breech where the knees and hips are both flexed. In an oblique or transverse lie, the presentation would describe whichever part of the foetus is likely to enter the pelvis first. This may include a shoulder, an arm or even the placenta. Palpation technique is an important part of making an accurate assessment of the lie, presentation and position of the foetus. 
Keep one hand still and move the other hand working down both sides of the foetus to assess where the poles are and which pole is which. The position of the foetus describes what you would expect if you were palpating the sutures on the foetal head during a vaginal examination in labour. However, in ex abdominal examination, this is worked out from where the foetus's back is. If the foetus's back is lying to the mother's left, it can be presumed that the foetus is lying in the left occipito transverse position. If the foetal back is to the maternal right, it can be assumed that the foetus is lying in the right occipito transverse position. If on palpation, the foetal back cannot be identified, but all four limbs can be felt anteriorly, it is likely that the foetus is lying in a direct occipito posterior position. If the foetal back appears to be central and it is difficult to palpate the limbs, it is likely that the foetus is lying in direct occipito anterior. The final part of palpation is assessment of engagement. Engagement is the descent of the presenting part below the pelvic rim or the pelvic inlet. This happens from around 36 weeks in prima para and sometimes as late as in advanced labour in multipara. It can be described as how many fifths of the foetal head are palpable in the maternal abdomen. There are two common techniques used to assess engagement. The first using the right hand to assess engagement whilst looking at the maternal face as this can be uncomfortable. The second is to use both the hands whilst facing the maternal feet. This can be easier for students who do not feel very confident about assessing engagement. It's useful to think of the head as a bony ball and to describe how much of the bony ball that you can feel. The widest part of the bony ball is central. If you can feel the widest part of the foetal head, then it is likely to be three-fifths or more palpable. If you can't feel the widest part of the bony head, it is likely to be two-fifths or less palpable. Auscultating the foetal heart. The normal foetal heart is between 110 and 160 beats per minute. It is best heard over the anterior foetal shoulder. In routine practice, Doppler can be used from 12 weeks to detect a foetal heart and a pinard stethoscope from 28 weeks. If you're using a pinard stethoscope, place the trumpet end over the anterior foetal shoulder, put your ear to the other end. You must ensure that no part of your hands is touching the stethoscope, otherwise you will be unable to hear the foetal heart. You will need to time the foetal heart in beats per minute using a watch. Doppler should ideally be used over the anterior shoulder, although when the foetal heart can be picked up from the front of the foetal chest. Some Dopplers have a screen which will tell you the foetal heart rate. In some you will have to time it for 15 seconds and work out the foetal pulse. Do remember to clean the gel from the patient's abdomen afterwards with a tissue. If blood pressure and urinalysis have not already been performed, then the manual blood pressure should be taken and compared to the booking blood pressure and urinalysis for protein and leukocytes, but not for glucose in routine antenatal assessments. At the end of the examination, Encourage the patient to cover up and help them to sit up. It is very hard to get off an examining couch with a full-term pregnancy. In summary, introduction to the patient followed by inspection and blood pressure and urinalysis if not already performed should be followed by palpation for fundal height, the lie presentation and position of the foetus and whether the presenting part is engaged within the maternal pelvis. You should auscultate for the foetal heart and at the end of the examination, help the patient to sit up and thank them for their time.